let's go uh, get in the project uh, basic project updates so every year cncf publishes a, a, a project velocity report and uh, this is a report that was published in last uh, 2024 jan uh, it's like a report from like uh, based on the data that was collected from 23 jan to 24 jan and based on that containerd is like the 13th most active project in the cncf uh, ecosystem with like uh, 281 unique authors like uh, uh, contributing to the project and uh, then if you move on to the usage growth, the adoption of containerd has like uh, almost doubled in the last year uh, based on a report from like Datadog that was published in like uh, now, November 2023. And then uh, this adoption that we mentioned earlier was like mostly driven by the Kubernetes restores, like there are a bunch of them. And along with uh, this, uh, the, there are also other services like AWS Fargate and Docker also that uses containerd underneath. Uh, not just the cloud providers and the Kubernetes distros. And uh, that's about the adoption. And uh, just uh, now let's get into the containerd ecosystem. So we have a core set of uh, services and API in containerd that has been there for like now uh, almost uh, six, seven years. And like you can say that is like uh, pretty mature. And all the extens uh, containerd is like pretty extensible and everything has been developed uh, with keeping this extensibility in mind so we have the client system, uh, client and the back end which includes the content store snapshotter and runtime so uh, if you get into the client part like you have the kubelet which uses the cri side and then the container engine and uh, build kit which uses the containerd client and then uh, net uh, netcatl and finch colima etc also, like uh, the snap, uh, snapshotters and uh, containerd streams. Now, let's get into each one of those extensible pieces. So, going on to the clients, we have CTR, which is like a command line dev tool that is part of the core containerd project itself. It provides basic functionality to deal with uh, containerd features and also can be used as a debugging uh, tool. Then we have Netcatl, which is a non core containerd project and exposes a Docker like CLI. And it can be also used to test new features of containerd. Uh, basically, uh, Netcatl is like go hand in hand with containerd, you can say. Then you have the CRI CTL, uh, which is a CLI for the CRI API, uh, which, is, uh, a, which is a Kubernetes project. And then you have Docker or Mobi, which uses containerd. Uh, recently, like container, uh, Docker also started using further integration into the containerd image store and like uh, snapshotters and other containerd features. Then there are some, uh, there are a bunch of developer platforms uh, which uses containerd, which includes like Colima, which provides uh, container runtimes on macOS and Linux with a very minimal setup. Then Finch is from uh, AWS, which which is another Docker-like CLI for macOS, and recently they launched for Windows. Then you have Rancher Desktop, it provides a Docker-like experience on macOS, Windows, and Linux. Now moving on to the snapshotters part, which are like you can, uh, which can be also extended uh, via the Proxy plugins. Uh, there are a set of built-in uh, or uh, what you can call as core, core snapshotters, and Blockfile is one such uh, new snapshotter that was introduced recently. And we also have like better first dev mapper extend the core snapshotters. There are also a bunch of uh, remote snapshotters like uh, NIDAS, uh, Overlay BD, Star GC, etc. And AKS Artifact Streaming is like a new vendor project that was like uh, recently uh, into the remote snapshotters. Now moving on to the runtimes and streams part, we have the OCI runtimes like RunC, which is the default uh, Linux OCI runtime. And there are uh, other runtimes that containerd support. And there are like uh, other external stream projects, uh, for example, like the HCS stream, which helps to run containerd on Windows, and Runvasi and containerd Wasm streams are like new projects uh, that helps to run, he helps to run Wasm workloads on uh, WebAssembly workloads on like Kubernetes. Now we will j just go through the current sub uh, supported release of like containerd. So currently there are like two branches, uh, two active branches going on, like uh, 1.6 and uh, 1.7, 1.6 is considered as an LTS release, mm, and so uh, 1.7. Uh, recently, we had a change in the 1.7 released uh, and end, uh, end of life timeline. Uh, this was because, like, if uh, 1.6 is an end, end of life, uh, when 1.6 is an LTS, and like 
uh, 1.7 is not LTS, there is a chance that the importers can get stuck uh, on a version of container D that is end of life. So like uh, we have changed the support policy so that uh, 1.7 will also be in a extended period of support. So 1.6 container D and 1.7 will be like going into end of life at the same time. And then we have the container D 2.0, which will be like uh, released in a few months. So now moving on to the container D 2.0 features. So first let's get into the release plan. The container D 2.0 beta was released like in last November before the KubeCon NA. And now we have the container D 2.0 RC was released two days back. And it will be highly grateful like if everyone can like test out the container D RC, uh, RC and like let uh, report the issues or like any feedback that you have so that we can make a stable release. So now going on to the features in Contain, uh, Contain D 2.0. Uh, there has been a huge refactoring that has been done in Container D uh, and like uh, there has been a pretty uh, good code chain like moving the packages uh, or in, in the code base and like creating separate repos. So this was done so that so as to make the Go client, or we want to call the Go client as uh, stable. So uh, as part of it, like the uh, client and core API packages will be stable and there won't be any breaking changes in uh, minor releases in the 2.x series. And uh, for the rest of the features, I hand over to Weifu. Hello. Um, I think um, before we introduce the new before we introduce the new, new features, I think um, we got, we need to we need to check out the uh, the the applications. Uh, one of the one of the reasons to start a new major release is to remove the existing deprecations. You know, um, we've already deprecated so many more features in the past several releases, so we think it um, to the our release is um, good timing to delete them. But you can see here uh, is the long list, right? It's more challenging to to review the item one by one. So we provide um, the deprecation warning features to uh, to detect it if there is any in use the deprecated features. So you can use the CTR2 to run it, and you will say it, um, what features you are using and uh, what suggestion can provide to you to do the Migrations. This feature also backport to the 106 and 107, so it's very convenient to you if you have a plan to upgrade to the to the our list. And uh, and since we have um, deleted some deprecated features, so the the config uh, the configure structure has been changed, right? So instead of rewriting the configure by yourself, we provide uh, uh, the configure migration. Command the light to help you to cover that. And yeah, anyway, you need to ensure you don't use any deprecated feature in your production. So next is to the sandbox API. Um, this API is, to use, is used to group multiple containers in one uh, sandbox environment. Um, but traditionally has been done by the shim process. If you have a look at Look at the Shim V2 implementation. You will see Canada D can connect to the existing running Shim, so that Canada D can group multiple containers in one Shim. But um, the Shim process is used to handle the life cycle of containers, so there's no difference between the containers. So for the Kubernetes case, we need to um, introduce a sandbox concept, right? Um, we need to create a post container first. And uh, the, that that container is used to hold all all the any um, opening namespace resources related to the sandbox environment. Uh, for example, we can um, set up a networking interface in the networking namespace, and including the routing information so that um, the other container can use that. So after creating the post container, we can. Uh, we can apply the following application container into the sandbox environment. So we actually maintain the pod sandbox in concept in the CI plugin. But um, sandbox environment doesn't mean 
it, it is a post container, right? It can be a secure VM environment. So we don't have that. We don't have the sandbox concept, right? So there's no um, the defined way to to deal with about the sandbox life cycle. So um, every developer have to build their own concept and own logic to handle the sandbox environment's life cycle. So it's not expected. So we introduce the sandbox API. So right now, um, in the 2 hour release, sandbox concept is the um, first class metadata, right? So um, we push down all the sandbox API implementation back to the Canadian stream. So, um, so it's like uh, external plugins. We can use the different uh, configuration to choose the different sandbox controller. It's what we did to the uh, external plugin for the for the uh, remote snapshot. And there is a other use case. Um, someone want to create um, a sandbox environment that has the different platform from the host. Yeah, for example, you can um, create a Windows container in the Linux, in the Linux. So Sandbox can also cover that. So based on this design, we end up with this architecture. And this is for the CI service. Um, you know, uh, in a Kubernetes, um, each port has the uh, unique, the runtime handler. Each runtime handler hand can have a different uh, sandbox controller. Um, for for this one, uh, sandbox power sandbox controller is the default one. It is the compacted mo mode. You can run with the existing uh, stream window implementation without sandbox API. So the this is the workflow. Yeah, when you try to create a sandbox environment, you need to uh, touch the container service, and then you need to uh, use the task service to create, to, uh, to involve a container stream process, and then you, you, you create the task. And what is new here? Um, it is uh, we introduced the stream management here. We can use the stream management to create a stream environment that is similar to the sandbox environment. So we can make adjustment to the stream environments just like we can make adjustment to the sandbox. So instead of uh, made adjustment to the post, post container here. And um, with the stream management, we can um, define what is the stream, what the stream can provide us with the uh, API. So, so if you choose the external sandbox controller here, um, you will see the workflow is very simple. We just um, um, set up a stream process and, uh, and uh, just call the create sandbox. All the detail is behind the Kennedy stream implementation. So, so it is up to the um, stream author. So we, we, we don't need to care about the what is, hello, uh, what is um, how to create a sandbox environment. So this is about the sandbox a API. And the next, um, yeah, let's talk about uh, NII a little bit. NII is the plugin um, is happening uh, when the CI plugin try to uh, generate OCI runtime spec. And, um, and the NII plugin can take the spec and make adjustment to that. So you can think of anything you want to do around uh, dynamic node resources, uh, for, uh, for example, you want to allocate it, the part of a GPU, GPU resources to your container. And this is the pluggable interface so that he can keep Kennedy very simple. So we don't need to make any significant change to support any type of the node resources you want to allocate it to your container. And, uh, and uh, in the 2 hour release, we, we can uh, talk to the uh, the sockets adjust um, that the NI plugin is listening to. So when the uh, new container request coming, Kennedy will send the OCI spec back to the uh, NI plugin. 
and the NI plugin will make adjustment to the spec and send it back to the Kennedy. So, so Kennedy can send a new OCI spec back to the runtime. So it's like an OCI hook, but it's very um, simple to use. And the uh, next part is still uh, related to the runtime change. Yeah, you know, we already support the user name space in the Windows 7 release. But uh, yeah, you know, um, if you just create a process with a new user name space, it's very simple. You just um, call the clone with the um, uh, flag. It's very simple, but it's not just the process. We need to change the file system for the, for the container. You know, a lot of container image was being built by the, by the admin user. So before you run the user namespace for the port, you need to change the owner for the container file assistance. In Windows 7, we use a very, very, very simple way. We just go through all the file in the container file system. You can see here. We use the change owner to uh, change the file ownership one by one. So, so uh, in a Linux platform, um, we always use the overlay of our system, right? So you can see this table. And the TensorFlow image is very huge and he has a lot of files. So when we touch the file in the low file, uh, low layer, you kind of will copy up, will copy up. So you will bring a lot of IO here. So you can see um, for this, for this image, it will take uh, three minutes. But even if we enable the meta copy, option, it still take uh, one second. So it's still very slow. So in, to, in 2DAO, we, we use the ID mapping here. ID mapping can provide us with a, a temporary view for the file assistant. We don't need to change the uh, files ownership physically. We just create a temporary, temporary amount of points. You can see here, we just call a system call here, we can have run, have uh, the, uh, the other views. You can see the performance is a uh, huge improvement here. So this is all about the, the runtime change. Yeah, let's get back to the account. Yeah. Uh Another feature that was introduced is called transfer service. Before we dive into that, let's see like why we needed something like transfer service and like uh, what does the traditional container D client do? So uh, consider the case of a simple uh, pull command like where you're pulling an image from a registry. It actually involves like the client will uh, first uh, via the distribution API get the manifest, uh, then get the config. So then you will know like which are all the layers that need to be fetched. Then the layers are fetched one by one and uh, stored into the content store. Then after all the layers are fetched, then we start with the uh, unpacking. The, that's basically like preparing the snapshot and um, uh, apply the diff one by one. And finally you commit the snapshot and then create the image. So here it's like one, uh, all the operations are like going uh, one after another. And also in container D, uh, the container client is something that you can call as like a fat client model or like a fat client because like all the uh, pull push operations are being handled at the client side. So even if you want to do some uh, refactor or rewrite, for example, in case of like uh, CRA had to re-implement and like it uh, resulted in like a lot of cycling imports uh, being done. So that's why we moved on to uh, transfer service. It was introduced in like 1.7 as an experimental feature, and now uh, let's see what does uh, what transfer service does. So, yeah, this, uh, transfer service has a very simple interface. So basically, you have a source and a destination, and depending on the source and destination, it's like the uh, operation that it's mapped to the operation that you want to. For example, a pull is basically a transfer from a registry to the image store. A push is like uh, from the image store to the registry. And similarly, you can see for like import, export, unpack, diff, tag, extra, and a registry to registry one is like a mirroring a registry image, which is like uh, still not uh, implemented. 
And now let's uh, look at the general architecture of the uh, uh, transfer service. So you have the client and like the transfer service is like basically where we have the uh, daemon. So uh, another uh, feature in transfer service that we implemented was like this uh, support for like streaming. So uh, with this streaming, actually uh, the client can get the progress from the daemon uh, via a stream and also the daemon can uh, uh, get the credentials from the cr request for credentials uh, from the client uh, via stream. So the in the same way like uh, for uh, re remote registry operations, uh, if it's a registry source, you can resolve it and then like you get the remote registry. This actually helps with like uh, uh, different configurations for like multi uh, support for like multiple registries. And also if the destination is like an image store, it's, it can resolve into like the content store or image store or basically uh, the snapshot. Now uh, let's see like how the transfer service uh, works with like a parallel unpack uh, model. So. Uh, it's the same pool, uh, but here, uh, uh, first after getting the manifest and then getting the config. So now we know what's the snapshot that we need and uh, then uh, based on the snapshot that we need, we can fetch the layers and apply the diff and do these steps in parallel. So we don't have to wait for all the layers uh, to be completely fetched, but like we can do the uh, operations in parallel and commit the snapshot and then like finally create the image. This is like much more uh, performant. Uh, the same also helps with like lazy loading of the images. So here also, uh, after the getting the config and then uh, you get the snapshot that you need. And uh, the snapshotter uh, here is actually, uh, you can call it as like the snapshotter has to be uh, smart enough to know that like uh, if it knows how to fetch the uh, content that is needed to build the file system, uh, uh, build the file system. So in that case, uh, uh, the tra when it requests that, like if the snapshot is present, uh, then the snapshot service immediately says that okay, snapshot is present. Then Kandani uh, can commit the snapshot and that create the image. But uh, in parallel, the snapshot service can uh, snapshot can basically uh, request for the layers and uh, uh, then uh, fetch the layers in background. So uh, these are some of the use cases that uh, we want to solve with like uh, transfer service. Uh, one of the main one is like confidential computing. So basically, uh, in a, if you have a guest sandbox environment, we want to pull the image or like content directly into the guest without going via the uh, host. Uh, another one is like uh, OCA refers, and then uh, then we have like the uh, plugins. So plugins to customize image pulling logic. That so this is like another part where we are. It's like the extensibility of containerity can be seen. Like you can actually like write custom image pulling uh, logic, uh, making use of transfer service, and then you have like credential management and like the uh, CRI uh, uh, use of CRI, uh, transfer service in uh, CRI plugin, which is like uh, still in uh, development. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, beside the besides the new features, we still do a lot of things to improve our qualities. Yes, uh, first thing is we enable the um, 64 runner in the CI for each pooling request. And we also backport this pipeline to the uh, 106 and 107. And since we do a lot of refactor and introduce the sandbox API and the transfer service, so we already do the release upgrade test. So this test is to, to ensure there's no regression issue when you try to upgrade Kennedy in place. Yeah, for example, we need to ensure we can uh, recover all the existing running parts and all, all the existing image. And uh, we also um, run into the several cases. Uh, for example, when the IO pressure can cause the shim leaking. So we, we, we want to prevent, we want to avoid this happen again. So we, we introduce the fail points test doing the CI pipelines. And uh, we still have a lot of things we want to handle around um, the transfer service and the sandbox API. So um, we have uh, still a lot of things to do. And uh, yeah, yeah. since we just released a first uh, release candidate for the 2.0 release, so we hope the everyone want to uh, try it and get some Kiss some, some 
uh, give some feedback. So that's it. Thank you. So any any questions? <laughs> Hi, thank you for the presentation. I want to know if you guys are planning to introduce on-build images support in near future for container deal as it used to happen in Docker. You mean the snap sorter? If you use the on-build images, the final image is much smaller. I don't know whether you call it a snapshotter or not, but ChatGPT says you don't support on-build images. Oh, you mean the storage? Co uh, storage. Sorry, I didn't get. I think she means when when you build Docker image. Yeah. You you can use uh, different stages and copy things between Correct. between images and use a different you know different base image. Uh, like yeah. Built image and runtime image, but I don't. Multi -stage. Yeah, that's you can copy from the previous image to this image. So the layered image, you have the sub smaller images when you're pulling, let's say, I have Ubuntu, then I have something else in it. So whatever is in the first temporary container, I was able to copy from the previous container to this temporary container and make it for you. This is like a multi-stage build here, too? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But from the previous stage, I was able to copy the files. I think already. I think the build kit already supports it, because we don't do the building function in in Kennedy. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, th thanks very much for the presentation. Uh, unless I'm mistaken, uh, at the last KubeCon, uh, you were expected to already have uh, Containerd 2.0 released by now. Uh, it seems like there was a delay. I'm curious if things were much more complicated than expected, and if so, what what was the challenge, and what what's uh, what's been happening? Yeah. I think um, there's a, I still have a task about the Sandbox API. We'll need to improve it. Yeah, um, yeah, this uh, kind of delay because we want to um, introduce the streaming I.O. Streaming I will use the API instead of use the, uh, the naming pipe. Yeah, yeah, right now we, um, we copy the container I.O. From the, from the one pipe to the other pipe, but right now we want to introduce the, the streaming I.O. Uh, API to handle that. We don't want to introduce the pipe things. So we still have a couple pull requests related to the sandbox. So um, I think I think those is nice to have. Yes, um, because we um, we still want to provide um, a good function to help the developer can implement their own sandbox controller. So right now, I think the streaming things we still we still need to wait for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Uh, and I think the last time I checked, Quasar was the only one that had implemented uh, on, on the Shim side the, the Sandbox API. Is it yes. still them, or has uh, Run C also made progress on that? Or I think we uh, right now we don't uh, we don't have the Sandbox implementation in the Shim V2. We just um, add the post Sandbox controller in the CI layer. So this is used to um, used to con Compatible with the existing running shim, I think we we can uh, implement sandbox API things in the set in the in the future. Maybe uh, yeah, we need to wait for the uh, existing run uh, existing shim window implementation can handle that. Unless I'm mistaken, Quasar has an implementation that is already working against the beta. Uh, uh, we are we are now working on it right now. Well, yeah, we we just want to implement this in the quasar. Qui Chris, it's uh, 
It uh, was donated by Huawei, uh, and it's now a CNCF oh. incubating project. Uh, they asked, yeah, they are pushed us to um, to merge things. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Quasar, they're working on yeah. Yeah. implementation on their and so, so they're the only ones at the moment who are implementing it on the southbound side? I think so. I, yes. mean, I don't know. Yeah, that we know. Yeah, I, I, I've been. I was watching uh, carefully uh, their application to join uh, the CNCF, and I really wanted them to join because I'm really quite excited about Sandbox API. Oh, okay. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, they joined. I think just before Christmas, and I was like, yes. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm quite interested in the the more Sandbox API from like the security perspective. So like better yeah. runtime isolation. Um, okay. yeah. And uh, you know, firecracker potentially uh, yeah. is 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 that the? Because uh, as far as I understand, with when Sandbox API is implemented, then firecracker would be a possible native uh, uh, shim implementation, right? Yeah, you right? could implement. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, any lightweight hypervisor wrapper around like pods or containers. Because right now they require like a. A fork of container D, uh, but yeah. now with the sandbox, they won't need that fork anymore, right? Right. right. Okay. Sure. Cool. I'm I'm quite excited about that. <laughs> cool. Yeah. yeah.